It would be lovely if we could just say stop it. Heartfelt words from an assistant commissioner on the front line of the family violence crisis. Lauren Calloway says Victoria Police has more work to do and wants families to start the conversation at home. <laughs> We've seen so many faces of women that have been murdered. Samantha, Hannah, Sweta, Danielle, Molly, Mackenzie. How do we fix this? I think we have to go back and look at the system we have. There is a group of offenders who don't want to respect the law, they don't want to respect the orders of a court, and they ultimately don't respect that women and their partners don't want, to, don't want to be around them anymore, want to feel safe. So the perpetrator accountability is one of the pieces I think we need to strengthen. When you say perpetrator accountability, you're talking about arrests and charges, correct? Yes, yeah. and I'm also talking about ultimately what the court will decide as to what to do with this perpetrator. Here's my, where I really struggle with intervention orders and br breaches of intervention orders. I have covered so many matters where women are murdered at the hands of men and inevitably there have been intervention orders, there's been court cases, there's been breaches and charges for the breaches. It doesn't stop them killing women. You're right, in some homicides there are absolutely all of those things present. There is a group of people who get their intervention order, get their first solicitor's letter, go to court, and we never hear from them again. They've learnt their lesson. It has been an intervention. But there is certainly some very high risk offenders in there who it doesn't matter what we do, if they get it in their mind that they want to murder someone, then that is what they're going to do. What is going through a man's mind when he hits a woman that he supposedly loves? I think that thought is a, and that question is something that we ask ourselves all the time. And it's not just about the hitting, there's all forms of family violence, coercive control, financial abuse, you know, degrading comments. What I don't understand is why perpetrators have such poor impulse control when things don't go their way. What would prompt you then to be violent because you can't cope with the situation in front of you? They have got to be connected into some kind of support service or program to have, to have their attitudes changed. There have been calls for another Royal Commission now, but you say that Victoria Police floated ideas in the last Royal Commission that haven't even yet been looked at or adopted, correct? Well, they were considered and they didn't, they weren't adopted as part of the Royal Commission. Was the Family Violence Register one of those ideas that was discussed? It was. It's a post-conviction model. So someone is convicted of a family violence offence, their details would be kept on a register. It could be premised on the fact that you're experiencing family violence now and you want to know whether or not, he hasn't disclosed his past, whether or not he's on this register. In other words, has he got form? Exactly. Right. Um, but what we do know is that not all family violence perpetrators end up with a police record. So I caution that those registries can give a false sense of security because they're only based generally on conviction data. Surely there is a part of this that is about resources, boots on the ground, knocking on doors, locking them up. We do that, we run days of action. Uh, the last one we ran last year, we arrested over 900 offenders and we are ahead of the other states in how you get a response right through from prevention through to recovery. So I, I do think we've got all the elements of a great system. So what proportion of offenders that get slapped with an intervention order actually abide by it? It's over 20%. And within the family violence dynamic, there are many cases where the victim survivor doesn't want the family to break up. They want the violence to stop. So this is why it's not like any other crime. Increased reporting has happened. We're up to 94,000 incidents a year. So I take heart from that, that people are feeling that there is a system that they can go forward and report it. But also, how about men just stop hitting women? Well, yeah, I mean, it would be lovely if we could just say, stop it. You've got to respect women. I think that's the most simple message. And if they show signs that they don't, I think you've got to jump on it straight away. And if you or someone you know is experiencing sexual abuse or family violence, there is help. Call 1800-RESPECT. That's 1800-737-732.